Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. We're super excited to have you all here today. We have a great topic to dive into, and it's going to be a really wonderful time for all of our attendees and for us as speakers. So I can't wait to dive in. So while we give everyone a few moments to join, I want to make sure that all our attendees can use the question box feature in GoToWebinar. So if you all could type into the question box where you're calling in from today, I love to see how these webinars connect folks from all different corners of the world, of the country, and see who's on our line today and where you're calling in from. For example, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, born and raised here. I love it. Um, and that's where I'm calling in from today. And it's heating up out here a little bit early in the season, but it's our first 80 degree day today. So uh, that's how I know it's already going to be a great day. All right, we have a few responses already coming in and I'll try and call out a few. We got Nicola from Bulgaria, welcome. Christy from Ithaca, New York, welcome. Bill from Pennsylvania, welcome. Ty from Boca Raton, Florida, welcome. We have some folks from the UK, welcome. Some folks from Florida, Canada, welcome. Other folks from Massachusetts, hello. We have Lee from Warwick, Rhode Island, not too far, hello, Lee. We have Arnella from Slovenia, welcome. We have some folks from Hartford, Connecticut, some folks from Miami, some folks from Los Angeles, welcome. And Camber from Kentucky, hello. Wow, this is tons of responses coming in. We have Aubrey from Arizona. We have Taylor from Tennessee, hello there. Malia from Indiana, welcome. We have Caroline from Michigan, Andrea from Vancouver. So many folks calling in right now. This is really great to see. And it's just such a heartwarming feeling to know that while we all can't connect in person, we can get together virtually on these webinars and talk about some great topics. I wish I could call out each and every one of you, but thanks for participating in our quick poll. And that way you're able to use the question box feature, which is the only available chat feature in GoToWebinar. So you can just use that question box to put in some questions or any of your thoughts throughout the webinar. I'll be able to see them and monitor them throughout. So with that being said, we're going to jump into a few housekeeping items for today. So again, welcome. Great to have you all here with us. The webinar will be recorded today, so don't worry about taking notes or anything like that. You'll have the materials in your inbox later today, but also all of our webinar recordings are easily found on the Local IQ and WordStream YouTube channels. So if you ever need to look back at a recording or wanna see some of our past webinars, just go onto YouTube, search Local IQ, search WordStream, and you'll be able to find all our webinars there. But like we said, it will be recorded and it will be sent to your inbox. So don't worry about that portion. And the reason why I had you all use the question box feature is again, I want you to be able to put in your questions throughout the webinar and save some of those questions for the Q&A session at the end. If you've attended any of our past webinars, you know we have a really great Q&A session. It's part of probably my favorite part because I love to connect with you all and see some of the questions that you have on the topics we cover. Uh, so make sure that you're able to use that feature and stick around for the Q&A. We have um, a live speaker from Google here today who can answer your questions directly. So that's going to be really great. So for everyone on the call today, some of you might be totally new to us, Local IQ. Some of you might be already working with us, which is great. Some of you might be familiar or working with or familiar with our sister brands, WordStream and Reach Local. So for everyone on the call today, I want us to get us on the same page as to who Local IQ is. And basically, Local IQ is a fully integrated growth marketing platform that helps growing businesses thrive and prosper with innovative technology and unparalleled expertise. So we, how we exactly do that is really technology is at the core of our platform. So we gather data from over 1 million local IQ campaigns and use that to make educated database decisions on your marketing for you. We also provide you with free tools at your fingertips to put more time back into your day so that you can focus on other things within managing your business while you have your marketing just running on all cylinders, easy peasy. And then also we do have proven results from years and years of experience. We've been in the marketing game for over 15 years, which is pretty crazy to think about because if you think about the age of digital marketing, it's not much older than that. So we've kind of been there through all of the ebbs and flows of the digital marketing space and all of the changes. So we have proven results and have that experience to um, really make data back decisions and educated decisions about your marketing for you. So something else about Local IQ that I want everyone to be aware of is that we are a premier partner with top marketing platforms. 
Now that isn't just handed out to every marketing platform out there. Um, we have to achieve certain um, set requirements for campaign success for our clients and customers. We have to demonstrate thought leadership and expertise in the space, and we have to meet very specific and uh, regulated requ requirements for these um, achievements. So we're really proud and excited to show off that we are a Google Premier partner, a Microsoft Advertising Elite partner, and a Meta Business partner. So this is really great, and we're super proud of it, and we hope you are all too. A really common question that I get asked on these webinars is where can you find out more about us? Where can you learn more about the topics that we cover here? Um, definitely check out our blogs and our websites. We cover all the topics that we cover on these webinars in depth on our blogs. So if you ever need to spend a little bit more time with something that we discuss, definitely head over to our site. Our blogs are easily accessible from there. Also be sure to follow us on social media. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. We share about other upcoming webinars and events. We also share any news or anything going on within certain platforms that advertisers and marketers should be aware of. We also share some of our latest um, you know, articles and news and topics that we're discussing as well. So definitely make sure you follow us for the latest and greatest there. So a little bit about us, our two speakers for today. Hello, it's wonderful to meet you all. Um, I'm your host for today. My name is Susie. I'm a senior content marketing specialist over at Local IQ, and how I came into this position is I was formerly a digital marketing consultant over at WordStream, where I was helping real businesses in the days in the day to day of their marketing campaigns. So I applied that real life experience to the educational content that I write today on anything under the marketing sun. So we cover topics from social media to search ads to search marketing to SEO and everything else in between. Um, like I mentioned, a fun fact about me is I'm based in Boston. I love it here. Sadly, my favorite season is coming to a close, a kind of an unpopular opinion, but I love the winter time and the snow. I just went snowboarding for the last time last weekend. Uh, so kind of bittersweet, but I'm looking forward to the summertime. I'm super outdoorsy. So I usually am outside uh, when I'm not working here. So that's a little bit about me. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you like. I share a lot of our local IQ news and webinars as well. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to our guest speaker for today. Hello, Jenna. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jenna. I'm from Google, and I'm a strategic partner manager. I work with some of our largest partners, um, Local IQ being one of them, to help them basically <clears throat> enable Google at scale with their clients. I've been at Google for about four years now, working with partners and clients. And I'm really excited today to talk to you guys about Full Funnel and Google Ads. Great, thanks so much, Jenna. I can't wait to hear what you have to share with all of us. Super excited for that. So with that, I'm going to jump into what we're going to be covering today. So if you have been poking around on the internet, you probably have heard that there have been a lot of platform updates from coming from Google Ads and other platforms as well. So we're going to discuss some of those key changes that you all should be aware of if you're looking to market and advertise on Google. Um, I also wanna cover some common challenges. You know, I've worked with real businesses and customers and accounts um, throughout the years. And there have been a few like common things that folks tend to struggle with. So we're going to you know, dig into some of those biggest hurdles within pay-per-click advertising or PPC and how you can overcome those. Um, and then we're going to dig into some insights from Jenna, some things on different verticals, some of the latest Google Ads um, strategies that are really coming to light um, and other insights as well. And then like we mentioned, we'll leave you all with a few thought starters to kind of jumpstart your marketing journey from here and jump into Q&A where you all will be able to ask questions to um, Jenna and myself. So if you've attended any of our past webinars, you know I love to keep our attendees on their toes. So I'm going to warm you all up with a quick pop quiz. I wanna hear from you, you know, what do you feel like is your biggest challenge with search ads right now? Is it, you know, you're struggling to get conversions? Do you feel like, you're trying to stretch your budget a little too thin? Do you feel like everything's going great and maybe there aren't any issues that are really coming to light? You know, everyone is, situation is different. Everyone is going to have, you know, a different answer to this, but I will call out some of our answers here. So feel free to type into the question box what you feel like your biggest struggle uh, with PPC right now might be. So a few folks still asking about the recording. I did just um, respond to all, so you all should be able to see that. That again, the recording will be in your inbox um, along with the materials later today. And again, recording easily found on YouTube. 
So let's see some of these answers to our pop quiz here. Anita said, not getting enough conversions. I know that's a constant struggle for a lot of folks. Maggie as well said the same thing. Um, let's see who else is has struggling with some different things. So we have Andrea says, cost per lead has doubled. Andrea, I highly recommend checking out some of our resources on that. We did a whole webinar on search ad benchmarks that you all should check out. We also have resources on that on both the websites and blogs. Um, we definitely have seen some costs going up over the years. So definitely check into that, but I can understand some folks um, checking into that. Maggie had a really good answer here. She said incorporating AI or automation into her PPC is kind of a struggle right now. Definitely can understand that. It's kind of a hard thing to, you know, get into the groove of if you're not totally used to um, having you know automated control over your account you're usually used to having full manual control totally get that melissa said quality of leads definitely a, can be another struggle as well um jimmy said budget is not fully being spent love that answer that's a common issue with a lot of advertisers that you know i think a lot of people overlook so that's definitely interesting as well um martha said she has str uh, struggles to calculate what her budget should be um dave and david are struggling with a few different disapprovals and with trademarks and things like that uh nick says he's in a very competitive industry so beating out competitors it's another uh great challenge um so caroline also said search volume so all sorts of different answers here right so i think the point of this pop quiz is to really remember that you know, you, your situation, your unique needs are going to be different from the advertiser next to you. And I want you all to keep that in mind when we cover um, some of the topics that we talk about today. So with that, let's go first go into some platform updates. Um, this is just kind of, you know, for the benefit of everyone to get us all on the same page of what is new and upcoming within the Google Ads platform. So we'll jump into the challenges and the insights after this, but I think it would be good for us all to kind of just get a refresher on what's rolling out on Google right now, what's already been implemented and how we can prepare. So first update is um, late last year, we updated the destination requirements. Um, we saw that coming out from Google. So basically what that means is that, oh, hold on, let me go back. So your landing page experience is going to matter now more than ever. So if you are familiar with what that means, so your ad has a landing page attached to it. That is your destination. So in this case, your landing page is synonymous with destination. And in order for your ad to go live, there are specific requirements for you that your destination has to meet. Um, and we've always had these requirements, right? We've always known that, of course, our landing page has to be functional, right? It has to work. It has to be appropriate, right? It can't, you know, contain anything, um, you know, that wouldn't be appropriate to have on a landing page, any type of content like that. Those are kind of givens, um, but some of the new requirements that they're adding in is just um, has to do with experience. So Google is digging in a little bit more to the quality of your landing page. You know, not just that it hits the bare minimum of it's working, it's appropriate, you know, it has everything that it needs to be a functioning landing page, but it also needs to provide the user with a good quality experience. So what that might mean is not having like a ton of pop-ups and um, content that's just, you know, berating them throughout as they're scrolling. Um, making sure that your phone number on there is verified in a real complete phone number certain things in small details like that can really make the difference for the experience for the user and that's why google is rolling that out so if you don't have a high quality good experience on your landing page you might see an ad disapproval come up, come through so this is something that we just want everyone to be aware of you know for most folks this won't impact you uh, but just something to keep in mind um, now, the second update isn't really big news um, that is totally new to us. It is big news, but we've heard this probably a ton of times before. I'm sure you all have heard a little bit about this uh, because it's been in discussion for a couple of years now because it's such a big part of our advertising strategy. And that is that third party cookies are being deprecated. So let's dig into what that means. So what third party cookie data is, is aggregated data that's collected from you know, multiple different sources across the web. And that's how advertisers up until now have been gathering data and choosing, you know, making data back decisions for their audiences that they're targeting and so on. Um, that is now being sunset to be a more privacy first approach to advertising. So we're suggesting that advertisers rely now on first party data. Then that's data collected um, from, a, from the business or from your own organization that you can leverage in your advertising. So that's basically what is happening with this update. 
Now we have found out within the last, you know, six months or so that the third party cookie deprecation has been pushed out to the second half of 2024. So the good news is that everyone on this line has time before third party cookies get deprecated. However, we do want you to be prepared. So this is how you can kind of prepare. And I did pull a quote from Jenna actually that from one of the last webinars she did with us. So definitely check out the recording from that. Um, but I think she sums up first party data really well here and what you can do. So of course, first party data is the data that you hold as an organization, as your company. It's the information you already have versus third party cookies isn't data or info you would necessarily have on your own. Um, so what most businesses are doing now to you know, start collecting first party data and prioritizing it is they have a CRM where they're tracking those qualified leads or those closed sales so that they can turn them into audiences and other sorts of data points that they can use to import into Google and to target from there. So for example, you might be wanting to include a lot of lead magnets in your site to kind of optimize, prioritize and get more first party data within the next you know, few months or year or so. So the third update that I just wanna cover here is that there are a few new ad types or a few verticals. Now this won't apply to everyone on the call, but I think there are, is a key takeaway here that we can all um, kind of get from this. So for auto finance and travel, there have been new ad types rolling out. And here's an example for auto. And basically it just allows you to list kind of some of the things that you have availability that you have available for sale. Um, so it's a little bit different here. It's kind of just a new interactive way where folks don't have to necessarily go to a plain old search ad to find your business. They can go in and see your actual um, services or um, sale possible open sales listed. Um, so with this, if you're not in auto or finance or travel, that's okay. What I want everyone to take away from this is that there are new ad types and new updates rolling out across specific verticals all the time. So be in the know of your specific industry and the news and the digital marketing news within your industry. We cover a lot of industry specific topics on our website and blog. Uh, so definitely check that out because like I mentioned, everyone's advertising situation is going to be unique to not only their business, their needs, their budget, but also their vertical and their industry. Um, with that, speaking of new ads, we also have new ad assets rolling out across the board. So ad assets, they are formally known as ad extensions. So if you've heard of ad extensions, this is what we're calling ad extensions now. They're called now called ad assets and they're applied to ads kind of just to beef up your search ads. So they're like additional portions of your ad that you can kind of tack on to them um, to just make give your user a little bit of a better experience, maybe something else to click on, something else to look at. Um, and there's been some new additions. So we might be uh, um, familiar with like site link extensions or site link assets now, or image ad extensions, which are now image assets. Um, but now we also have business name and logo assets. So that's the new one that they've added. Um, and it just kind of, again, beefs up the ad a little bit, um, makes it a little bit more eye catching and also helps reinforce your brand, right? Because you can add in that logo, you can add in that name. Um, it is only available and visible on mobile search right now, and it's still currently in beta, so it's still rolling out. So if you don't see it in your account, that's totally normal and okay. But I want you to be on the lookout for it because if you are eligible and go through Google's advertising verification process, which means you're a verified advertiser, right? You're providing specific documentation to prove that your business is legitimate and advertising on Google, then you might end up seeing this in your account. And I think it'd be a great thing to leverage. And last but not least, we did see recently, very recently within the last few weeks that um, some of our attribution models that are available to us will be sunsetting. Um, this might feel like a big change or update, but it's really not that huge of a deal because um, most folks are already on the two remaining attribution models. So let's take a step back and talk about what attribution model modeling really is. So this is how your conversions are being credited. So it's how Google, for every action that a user takes throughout their journey to get to your ad, those small actions to that conversion to your ad and then to that conversion get attributed differently. So for example, if somebody searches for your business and then doesn't necessarily convert right away and then goes and sees a display ad later and then clicks on that display ad and converts that way, those are multiple actions to get to that conversion. So they'll each get weighted differently depending on the attribution model that you have selected. Now, for most folks, you're either on last click 
or on data-driven, the new default attribution model for Google Ads. Those are going to be the two remaining attribution models that you have to choose from when choosing your conversion tracking, okay? However, there are a few other ones that we have had available to us that will be sunset as of July, 2023. Now, it's said in the announcement that actually less than 3% of conversions being tracked across advertisers are using these other attribution models. So odds are the majority of all of us on this call won't be impacted by this update. And that's why I wanted to talk about it because it feels like a big update when you first hear it. But then when you really dig into it and look under the hood, it's probably not going to impact you, but it is a good reminder to look at your conversion tracking, look at your attribution model and just check in on that every so often. And if you're not on last click or data-driven, you might wanna be switching over to that. Or of course, the data-driven attribution modeling, which is the new default. We cover this a lot in depth on our blog. I know it's a pretty complex topic, but I did just wanna to touch on it really quick, high level too, just as a reminder to all of us. All right, so let's dig into some top Google Ads challenges here. So I think the first challenge that everyone can probably agree with is that um, fortunately, not all of our Google Ads budgets are unlimited. Um, everybody has a cap to their budget, so how can we make our budgets work for us? So first and foremost, you're gonna wanna have a holistic strategy. Don't just be relying on one type of ad. Um, try and beef up your search strategy with other portions of the Google Ads suite. So for example, building out your Google business profile or trying a couple different ad types. Those result in different types of costs um, that can help you balance out your budget overall. You also can leverage the new budget reporting. Now it's not totally new anymore, but it's still pretty fresh in the platform. They rolled out um, pretty in-depth reporting for budget tracking. So definitely check in on that, it's a great resource. And then last but not least, continuous keyword research. So keyword research is kind of at the core of your search ad budget because certain keywords are gonna cost you more or less. So try and find keywords that are at a lower cost or potentially be negating out any keywords that could cost you more as negatives. Um, our free keyword tool does give you um, cost estimations for keywords, so that can definitely help. And our platform actually does a lot of this for you. So. Our director of data science, Connie, um, had a pretty good summary of how our platform optimizes keywords for budget. Um, basically, she said the challenge of keyword research, you know, ties back into those pricey competitor keywords and not adding enough negatives. So basically, um, we set those for you. So we are constantly adding negative keywords to help you keep costs down, basically, in our platform to make sure that you're making the most out of your budget. So our second kind of challenge here is building local awareness. Um, local awareness is harder than it might seem. You know, obviously all of us are probably have some sort of location targeting set on our campaign, um, but there are a few other ways that you could kind of build those impressions. So for example, video ads tend to yield a lot more impressions than other types of ads. So that could be another way to kind of beef up your search ads, bring, getting some awareness through video ads, and then see searches coming through later onto your search ads. You could also try dynamic keyword insertion, which automatically adds certain types of terms into your search ads. So like near me or certain cities or towns in your area. Um, also, don't be afraid to get a little bit more tight with your geo-targeting. You, like I said, we're probably all doing some sort of location targeting right now, but try and you know tighten it up a little bit. It's okay if your location is a little bit smaller, but it might be of higher quality. And then also try running SWOT analysis for your local market. So what that might mean is basically assessing the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats within your Google Ads account to ensure that you know, you're hitting where you want to hit within your target market, see where there might be opportunities to build out more local awareness and things like that. So for driving leads, which is kind of the end game of all of our search ads, you might want to try local services ads. So if your business is within a services industry, you can try these out. They're kind of optimized to drive leads for a local business. So definitely check those out. There's an example here on the screen for you. Um, you also might not want to always just think about the end goal of the leads, but also be optimizing your website. So, you know, you might not be, you could have the best search ads in the world. But if your website isn't optimized for leads, you're not going to get the leads from those clicks from your search ads because at the end of the day, your website is hard to navigate or it's hard for someone to become a lead. There's a long form, something like that. 
Um, and then also just always be thinking about how you can enrich your ads. You know, we talked about some new ad assets that you could add in. Definitely another way to drive leads. We talked about strong CTAs. So, you know, in building up your ad copy to be as specific as possible to help you get leads is a really great strategy. So the last two here, maximizing ROI. Of course, we want to squeeze the most ROI as possible out of our search ads. And one way that we can do that is to be flexible, <clears throat> excuse me, be flexible by switching to different tactics. So, you know, you might have in your head that a certain type of search campaign or a certain type of ad is the way, way to go for your business. It's always worked. But if you're not seeing the ROI that you're that you want to be seeing, then you need to try something different, right? So being flexible, being open to trying new things is really the way to go to make sure that you get the most ROI. Also keeping in mind that your budget is really, you know, kind of you have to spend money to make money here. So thinking about that too. So if you don't have the ROI that you're you want right now, you know, you might want to reassess, you know, where you're putting, you know, budget. And it might not mean like you need to raise your budget. I understand that's not always feasible but maybe reallocating budget, you know, to a certain campaign that's doing a little bit better. And then again, just being on top of it, performing regular audits, scheduling that time to just take even a few minutes a week or every two weeks to check in on your account can really make a difference in your ROI. Um, our president from Local IQ has a great kind of quote on this because we do have cross media optimization technology that's constantly optimizing your budgets for the most ROI possible across different channels, across search um, platforms. So definitely check, check this out. But basically we're reading trends, we're anticipating hurdles and just using data to make data back decisions to make sure that you're hitting daily spend targets to maximize your ROI. And last but not least, we want to be achieving a, a sustainable growth, right? So to maintain growth in PPC, make sure that you're implementing a multi-channel strategy. For example, um, this company right here is doing, you know, I'm searching for a new snowboard. They're selling a search ad here, but they're also selling to me through a shopping ad. So, you know, those are just a few examples of how you can do a multi-channel strategy to just maximize both your search and your Google ad strategy overall and your growth there. And then also, again, just first party data is so important. So implementing a CRM, which is an example of the CRM capabilities within our platform here with this screenshot uh, can really make the difference. And with that, I'll hand it off to Jenna. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'll be talking today about the importance of full funnel marketing on Google. And it seems like based on the concerns that came through the chat, um, I'll be addressing some of those. So I'm looking forward to kind of diving in a bit more. Um, before I dive in though, real quick, I know um, Susie touched on this, but uh, with Google specifically, Local IQ is a top 3% Google Ads partner. Uh, this basically means that only the top 3% of uh, partners are considered a Google Premier partner. And this gives them access to um, education and insights, access and support, and then also recognition, recognition and rewards. You can see here as a client that's working with Local IQ, this also means that you get access to all of these resources. Um, so to kick us off, I'm going to talk um, a little bit more high level about full funnel marketing. Um, on the next slide, um, you'll see this little journey. We see that we all spend so much time on our screens and especially our phones. Um, so as mobile has become kind of an indispensable part of our daily lives, we're witnessing a real fundamental change in the way that people consume media. So what people used to be um, kind of predictable daily sessions online, that's really been replaced by many fragmented interactions. So there are hundreds of moments every day, right? watching a video on YouTube, then maybe searching the closest parking lot on Google Maps, and then searching where you want to go to dinner on Google, and then maybe playing on an app. Like if I think about even myself, or if you want to think about yourself, how you use your phone and computer for the most part, where, you know, I might respond to a text, and then I might watch a video, a YouTube link that a friend sent me, and then I might answer an email, and then I might open apps. Like I'm not necessarily, it goes on and on. I'm not necessarily living in this one place like we used to. So through Google advertising, we can really be there in all those moments that matter. So um, if you're a 
potential customer looking for a product or service, or if you're a target audience um, and you want to target your audience who's just kind of surfing their favorite sites, um, our Google network, and specifically if we think about the display network, they reach over 90% of people on the internet. So with these multiple touch points, Google can be there to reach your customers for every single step. Now on this slide, we see that um, we know the purchase journey is more fragmented than ever, like I just spoke about, but we also know that consumer behavior is shifting and it always has been and always will be. And brands that can kind of continue to change um, are really the ones who are successful and not just today or in a year, but if we think about the next five and 10 years from now. Um, so if I knew exactly what consumer behavior will look like in the future, I probably wouldn't be here today. But the reality is there's a lot that we are still kind of guessing about. Um, but the good news is that we know a few things are very likely to be true. And one is that brand building will continue to become more and more important than ever. And we've seen this trend increase since this study began in, 20, in 2006 on this slide. And it has really only accelerated more recently in this like COVID recovery world that we're living in. But what we're seeing is that the most powerful or recognizable brands and companies shown in dark blue have continued to see more growth than less recognized brands. And the gap between these two kind of continues to grow wider every year. So more recognizable brands not only see stronger growth, they also are more resilient and less volatile during COVID and during the global economic crisis back in 08. Um, next slide. So knowing that brand building is important, what does smart brand building really look like? Um, it doesn't mean you should put all your dollars into kind of this upper funnel brand building tactics. You still need kind of acquisition marketing, which also converts existing demand. So what this looks like on Google is leveraging. You can see some of the products on the right. Obviously, Google search, shopping, discovery, uh, video action campaigns, which are on YouTube or our new performance Mac cam max campaigns to basically target people in the market for your product and service and what I imagine most of your clients are currently invested in. Um, these are primary, primarily uh, auction-based tactics, which means competition can be intense as many brands are going after these same customers. But there comes a point as you continue to grow and optimize to the best of your abilities where you start to max out um, your supply at basically an affordable cost per lead, and it'll be necessary to kind of invest in creating new demand. So when I think about kind of this full funnel, I think about, yeah, you want to capture this demand right at the bottom of the funnel, but you also need to be creating it and feeding this funnel to continue growing your business. Um, Next slide, yeah. So that's where brand building really comes in. So right, it, like I mentioned, it focuses on building future demand and on the recognition that it gets tougher to convert future demand if consumers don't know about your brand. They don't know what your brand stand, stands for or why your product or service is different from your competitors. If we look on the right here, these are just some of the formats of YouTube we have that kind of tackle um, finding this like long-term success. And speaking of that, if we go to the next slide, I love this graph. Um, the goal of brand building campaigns is to kind of create the sustainable demand that enables your performance marketing investments to actually pay off. So that said, it's really important to recognize that the two tactics work on different time horizons. So the sales activation tactics have these kind of like more short-term benefits that might wane if, uh, if you don't kind of continue the lower funnel investments. But brand building is a much longer sales burn. So as you're investing in creating this future demand, um, without that, you'll eventually start to see diminishing return on your performance campaigns and struggle to kind of drive year over year growth while sustaining or reducing overall cost per lead or acquisition. So as you can see, it's kind of a balance, right? Like we're thinking about short term sales activation, but we also need to be thinking about brand building if you want to sustain as a business. Um, so when we think about what the right business, uh, what the right Google product is for your business, Cole, um, it looks like this slide uh, kind of might have gotten messed up. But if we, no, sorry, go back. Yeah, um, it's this slide, but um, 
for awareness, I, I'm just going to voice, voice it over. It looks like the check marks might have fell off. But for awareness, um, it's display, YouTube, and performance max. For consideration, it is uh, display, YouTube, performance max, and search. And then for action, it's really, it's all of them except uh, display. So what is the right Google product for your business goals? So we think about them in these kind of three buckets, like I mentioned, um, awareness, consideration, and action. Ah, there they are. Um, so for awareness, it's really how are you building awareness or branding your company for consideration? It's how are you ensuring your potential customers know about you and are considering you when they're looking for a product or service? You want to be in their consideration. And then lastly, the action piece is getting those leads or sales, right? And wanting them now. I know everyone wants to focus um, their business on action, right? But based on everything I just shared, I think just doing action is typically not going to cut it. Like there's going to be diminishing returns because you're going to max it out quickly because you're just capturing demand that's already there, but you're not branding or creating demand. So you're going to basically dry up your well versus kind of just continually feeding um, that funnel. And then these aren't really or strategies, right? They're more and strategies. So how are you ensuring you're making sure you're hitting all three of these buckets? both for short-term and long-term sales. And then on the next slide, um, let's break it down even in a little bit more detail and look at different audience segments. So let's say you're not getting, you're not driving quality leads. I saw those in the chat. Let's say you're not finding the right audience or you're not feeling like you're converting. Um, this is where we really need to be thinking about audiences and who you're targeting. Um, so local iq has a deep understanding of each of these audiences and kind of how to leverage them with google but i want to do a quick overview again we're back to the three buckets awareness consideration and action um so awareness detailed demographics right it's facts about life like let's say you're looking for parents of toddlers or parents of newborns or someone who owns a house versus rents a house right it's just detailed demographics about um, a potential audience. There's affinity. Affinity is like lifestyle and what people are passionate about. Let's say you wanted to target people who watch beauty videos or beauty mavens. And then custom affinity um, are websites potential customers visit, their stores they visit, or apps they download. And then for consideration, there's life events. So what about people going through an important life event like a graduation or a wedding, or let's say they're purchasing a house or moving? Um, which means they have a specific need for a specific service and product that could be your business. And then there's market audiences or people who are actively looking to buy a product or service. And then for action, you can also use in market, like I just mentioned, or you can even go more in depth um, and look for people who searched for a specific term in Google search. Um, so if they search something that's relevant to your products, like let's say, uh, I don't know, graduation gift or something like that, you can go ahead and target those people so you know that they're in market for your product or service. And then you can already, you can also engage with clients who have already been to your website or brought from you before, right? This is custom intent and remarketing or customer match. So the bottom three audiences. Um, and again, this is where for your first party data, which I know was touched on a little earlier by Susie is so important. And I'm going to dive a little bit more into that. But if you wanna drive sales, especially in the action bucket, and you want higher quality leads and you wanna drive conversions, your first party data is really vital. The data you hold as a company um, for your brand is really like gold, right? You can target past customers. Google will automatically create similar audiences based on them. So if you upload a list of past customers, people who've added to cart, let's say, um, you can connect your CRM to Google and share what type of clients typically result in a sale and our AI kind of learns to target more of those types of people. So audiences are really important. And then there are really three key components to driving success with your first party data. There's building, right? Building and connecting the data. You need to prioritize building a first party privacy forward data strategy focused on durable identifiers. Um, 
this is something again that you can work with local IQ and the team to do. And then second is measurement, right? Uh, we talked about the depreciation of cookies, third-party cookies. So how are the how are you making sure that your measurement is future-proofed and are robust and durable um, to ensure that you're addressing kind of the measurement gaps that may exist? Um, and then the third is really activating. It's optimizing towards those business goals through AI. So now that the first party data is in there, now that you're measuring it, how can you go ahead and activate it and ensure that um, you're advertising using that data to basically drive performance for you as a company? So this is really the foundation of a strong advertising strategy, um, especially on Google. Now we're going to spend a few minutes kind of quickly going through some of the Google advertising products, um, starting with search. So I'm sure this is one you all are familiar with, but Google search ads allow you to showcase your business product or services when people are searching and showing a clear intent. Uh, these sponsored or pay, paid ads, as you can see from this image, and you're probably familiar with, appear kind of in the top uh, first position above organic results. This will ensure your ads are visible, and as someone once said, the best place to hide a dead body is page two of Google search results. So this is especially important in a world that is mobile first, like I touched on in the beginning. Just consider how small the display of a smartphone is compared to a desktop. You're very, most people are unlikely to go to the second page. Next, we're gonna talk about the Google Display Network. Um, uh, you, this uh, display can basically help you reach people while they're browsing their favorite websites, showing a friend a YouTube video, um, checking their Gmail account, or using their phone and apps. Um, what matters is the targeting logic that the campaigns will use to show your ads to the right audience. Again, this is something um, like I touched on the audiences before that you can get help with from local IQ. Um, but for now, what you need to know is that we can target one, the audience, right? So certain types of people, um, like I said before, remarketing and your lists are really important. Two is smart solutions. So using AI and automated solutions to basically showcase, showcase ads to users who have the highest likelihood to convert. Um, all of Google's products utilize RAI, um, so that's a huge benefit of advertising on Google. Next is Performance Max Campaigns. This is one of our newest and most powerful advertising products. So what's amazing about this campaign type is it accesses all of Google's properties in one single campaign. So before, uh, which you can still do, right? You'll have a search campaign, you can have a video campaign, you can have a discovery campaign. Well, this includes all of them, right? YouTube, display, search, discovery, Gmail, and maps are all within this one campaign. Um, what's great about it is that your budget is optimized across all of the Google channels to optimize for the highest opportunity. So if they're if the AI is seeing like, hey, you know what? This is driving a lot of sales for this business on YouTube. Let me put more, uh, let me move some of that budget away from display and onto YouTube. And again, this is all automated. Uh, for now, Performance Max kind of runs alongside all your current campaigns. So you would never want to shut off your search campaign and just run Performance Max or shut off your YouTube campaign and just run Performance Max. The goal is it should run alongside it and kind of fill in the gaps. Um, at least for now. And then I'm going to quickly talk about YouTube, but in the next section, I'm going to go more in depth. YouTube has a ton of different formats, um, but overall, YouTube can provide reach. Um, it'll also enable you to drive awareness for your products and services, but just like our other products, YouTube has so many formats that you can hit all three of the buckets I talked about earlier. You can do awareness on YouTube, you can do consideration, we have video action campaigns which drive action or conversions, so um, YouTube really can hit all three of those buckets. And don't forget, um, obviously there's much more YouTube viewership um, during COVID and after COVID, but YouTube has still remained the second largest search engine, only second to Google. So the opportunity is really high. Um, and like I said, I'll dive more into it in the next section. But lastly, from a product standpoint, shopping ads uh, for, this is for e-com businesses. They are image ads appearing on Google search. I'm sure you've seen, seen them before. 
um, but they contain useful information like the product name and prices. Um, I'm going to name just a few of the benefits of shopping ads, but I think uh, one is better qualified traffic, right? By the time that people click on the ad, if you have a shopping ad, they have already collected enough useful information about your product. They know how your product looks by the picture. They're also aware if it's within their budget. They can see the price very clearly. And second, you can stand out, right? Your, your ads will appear when people are looking specifically for your product with a strong intention to buy it. Um, it has attractive pictures, useful information. Um, you can attract the right audiences. And now that you understand audiences a bit more, um, and it allows you the ability to basically stand out. Now let's spend some time talking about why YouTube um, and kind of the benefits. So when I think about, this kind of goes back to what I started this presentation with, the consumer landscape is changing and consumers have become more intentional in how they really evaluate brands and whether they're going to purchase a product or a service, um, including kind of this consideration of new brands. So now more than ever, consumers are spending more time in this exploring and evaluating phase. So this has really fundamentally changed not only the way that consumers um, really consume content, but also how they make decisions. There are a lot of touch points making the consumer journey non-linear and really complex. It's this endless loop that continually um, invites consumers to move between exploration and evaluation, and then it spans across multiple channels before making a purchase. So consumers are, uh, on the next slide, Consumers are becoming really much more intentional in how they evaluate brands, including their consideration of new brands. So as you see here, 40% of consumers are making fewer impulse purchases while shopping, and 47% of consumers had purchased at least one brand they've bought before. We're all creatures of habit, right? So if we have a brand we like, we might continue to stick uh, with the brand, but this tells us that the consumer path is no longer linear and consumers are spending more and more time in the mid funnel um, and digital consumption has really continued to increase year over year right and it's at an all-time high which has most definitely been accelerated by the pandemic but consumers are now spending more time on their phones and they're averaging spending time on 46 apps a month in 2021 so all this to say is having a diversified presence among di different digital channels is really, really important in today's digital climate. If you're just present on one channel, you're not hitting all of these points and it's going to be tougher to see this type of growth. And then on the next slide, um, these are just some helpful stats, right? YouTube's the world's second search engine. Like I said, it's growing at an insane pace. It's also a digital channel where consumers spend a lot of time considering and evaluating new brands, right? 90% of people say they discover new products on YouTube. It has the highest reach and viewing hours um, among ad-supported OTT streaming services. A quarter of watch time happens on YouTube. So people are spending a lot of time there. And how are you ensuring that your brand is kind of in the mix there to feed that funnel like we talked about? And then this is just a quick slide on comparing YouTube to traditional media, I think it's really interesting. We can see that unsurprisingly, traditional media consumption is really shrinking while digital channels like YouTube are growing, right? TV used to be the only medium to reach people at scale. That has changed, right? Viewers have been moving from linear TV to digital for years, but in 2020, we really had a shift that reached kind of this tipping point with the pandemic. Um, and then something to highlight is connected TV is a part of all of our YouTube products um, and video action. If you want to drive action, it's also included in. Um, now I'm going to be kind of shifting. I saw a few questions on this as well. So uh, this is for Google local service ads. This is a search product. Um, I'm going to do on the next slide. Let me start by kicking off what are what is lo local service ads. So we call them LSAs. They are specific ad format for really for local services to be easily booked. They show on the top of the Google search page and, page, and best of all, they are on a pay per lead model. So it's cost effective for your business to kind of show up right where local customers are ready to book. And as you can see in the image, if someone is looking for a plumber, um, these ads show and allow for local and quick booking for your business. 
you might be asking, okay, what kind of business do I need to be to show up here? On the next slide shows a breadth of businesses in North America, so which verticals? There are new verticals for LSAs coming out often, but these are the current verticals um, with a large amount in home services, professional services, and most recently, we launched in education, people care, um, healthcare, pet care, and wellness. There's a benefit to being one of the first advertisers in these new verticals. Um, LSAs have like a limited amount of inventory, so it's to your benefit to kind of go into these newer verticals. So if your business is in one of these, um, it would be a great time to launch LSAs. And then um, this is the last slide. So local service ads may be a fit for your business if one you see your business category on the list i just shared and this will be shared out after um, two if you offer in-person services so whether you have a physical store front front or are location based your business should offer in-person services and is not online only third your goal is to drive more phone calls since one of the unique benefits of local service ads is that potential customers can call or message businesses to basically book your services directly. And then four, you have to be willing to undergo verification checks to use local service ads. Um, there's a link here where you can kind of see what those look like. Um, we've been working a lot with Local IQ on these uh, local service ads. They actually have exclusive support from our local service ad team here at Google. Um, so please work with them directly if you're interested. Um, I'm gonna pass it back. I think we're gonna do a Q&A and I know I just covered a lot. So let me know if you have any questions. Yep, thanks so much, Jenna. That was so much information. That was really, really great. I know I learned a lot um, and tons of data there that I think everyone will find valuable. valuable. So that was great. We really appreciate it. Um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and launch a quick poll for everyone on the screen here. Um, I just want to see, you know, if you all feel like this was a ton of information. I know we covered a lot between the two of us. If you have more questions, or I saw a lot of questions coming in for specific types of situations and specific individual, you know, scenarios. So if you have a question like that, you know, I highly recommend hitting yes on that poll to get individualized advice from an expert. If you feel like you really want to kind of beef up your search marketing, your Google Ads strategy. With that, we're going to keep that poll live for the remainder of the webinar. So it will take over your whole screen and we're going to switch into an audio portion for the Q&A. Uh, so while that poll kind of hangs out there, uh, we're going to jump into Q&A here. So there are a ton of questions coming in, Jenna. Um, pretty crazy. There's some really, really great questions. If anyone still has questions, drop them in now. Um, I know we just have a few minutes, so I wish we could answer all of them, but I'll try my best to pick out a few here. Um, I'll warm up with a kind of a basic question um, that one of our attendees asked Jenna. Um, she wanted your opinion. Um, do you feel like it's worth, you know, um, Brenda asked this and she asked if you would recommend running display alongside a performance max campaign. And maybe before you answer that, could you also just quickly kind of explain what performance max is? Because I saw a couple folks also asking that as well. Yes. So um, what I recommend running display alongside, yes, if you're running, I think if it's best in class, you're running search, video, display, um, and if it's relevant to you, shopping, you're running all channels, and then performance max is kind of filling in the gaps on the side. Um, it gets to fill in and kind of optimize for where things are, where, they're, where it's seeing success, right, because it's across all channels. So quickly to touch uh, again on what performance max is, um, it is a single campaign type uh, where you add search image and it can create a video asset or you can add a video asset um, and it works across all of our channels. So YouTube, display, search, discover, so the Google discover page or for discovery ad, Gmail and maps. And basically you set a budget. The budget recommendation, I saw some questions about that is for performance max is three times your 30 day cost per lead in Google ads. Um, and that would be your daily budget. Um, and yeah, so basically is a single campaign that runs across all of these channels. And yes, if you have a display campaign or any other campaign, I recommend running alongside it. 
great answer there. And I like how you kind of have that holistic approach in mind always. Like even if you're running Performance Max, you know, you can definitely run other campaigns. And thank you also for kind of jumping into budget there. That's always a hot question in here. So thanks for covering that as well. Um, a few more questions coming in here. Um, some folks wanted to know if there was, hold on one second, there was a few different good questions in here. Keep those questions coming in, so many. Um, you know, someone asked, okay, this is a great question here. There, Allison said, you know, she's in a certain industry and I think a lot of folks have kind of the similar question, but she had said she's never used Google Ads before. Where should she begin? So for all of our beginners here on the line, you know, how would you recommend, you know, tackling Google Ads, you know, day one? Um, I know that's a hard question and it's not really a black and white answer for everybody, um, but maybe just some general advice to get started. Yeah, I mean, I think let's say you're starting new, the first step is going to be measurement. I think I touched on this. So the foundation of any good strategy is going to be measurement. So making sure that you set up conversion tracking, you have a code on your site, um, going through the steps to do that. And then I, I would start with search. Um, you could either start or Performance Max, to be honest, now that that's a newer product, but I would start with either Search or Performance Max and launch at least a branded campaign to make sure that you're showing up when someone is searching for your brand. And then looking at resources like Keyword Planner to pull some uh, keyword insights to see where you should start kind of from a search perspective and then start pivoting your strategy there. Again, this is really going to vary based on your business right like if you're an e-com business then yeah you do search but um performance max which now houses our smart shopping campaigns i would do a smart shopping campaign because shopping is great so it really depends but i think uh, if i want to highlight one thing it's that be thinking about measurement no matter what you do because if you don't have that measurement in place which is the conversion tracking uh, the attribution which you touched on then all of the um, campaigns you're going to launch aren't going to be successful because you're not going to be able to measure them and have high quality. Um, so that is how I would think about it. Great answer there. I really like how you um, reinforce the fact that measurement at the end of the day is so important. So I would you know, definitely get that figured out first so that you're able to track the progress of anything that you implement. Um, so couple more questions coming in here. I know we're getting close to time. I wish we could answer all of them. Um, you gave some really great advice, Jenna. So with the sake of time in mind, I think we're going to have to wrap up. We wish we could answer all of these questions, but if for all of the folks on the line, I saw a lot of questions coming in for individual or specific situations, your specific industry, your business, definitely make sure you hit yes on that poll um, so that you can get your individualized advice from an expert one-on-one -on -one rather than kind of with the group here. Um, thank you all for your questions and your participation. Thank you, Jenna, for joining. We really appreciated the insight straight from Google. It's a, such a unique experience to be able to speak with you. So we really appreciate it. And this was great. Um, yeah. For everyone on the line, keep your eye out for our future webinars. We do them monthly. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye.